Right, I think we're ready to start. Uh, we're back. Um, it's been a month since the last webinar. Uh, thank you for, to all of you for coming. Uh, we've got very interesting conversation to be had tonight on the subject of tried it, didn't like it. Why do many smokers not get on with alternative nicotine products? Um, we've, we've got um, two entertaining guests for you and Louise Ross, of course, who's our NNA chair. Um, and um, we hope it's all going to go well. But we'll start obviously with the usual house notes. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Zoom, um, you're muted and your screen sharing is off. Uh, that means you won't get thrown up on the screen. Um, you, you, can, you can ask questions, but we can't hear you, we can't see you. So just sit back and enjoy the show. Um, we'll be having a chat with our three guest speakers tonight. Uh, and then I'll be asking you questions of them, uh, but there will be a Q&A. So to use the Q&A, you need to find the Q&A function. Um, uh, it's very easy to find. Um, if, if you're in the app, um, you just it should be at the bottom, a little menu at the bottom, or if you're on an iPad or an iPhone, you just touch the screen, it comes up. You can't miss it. It's just a, a square with Q&A written on it. Find that, because that's where you need to post your questions. Um, there is a chat function but don't use that to put questions in because I won't see them. So please keep them to the Q&A. We will keep to time. Um, so this will finish at seven. It will be strictly strictly time. Uh, and the session will be recorded, including the Q&A for putting on YouTube later. So if you ask a question, you do have the option if you, if you choose to ask it anonymously, or you can ask with your own name, that's up to you. Uh, there's no need to wait to ask any questions. If there's anything uh, someone says, uh, comes up that interests you, just drop your question in the Q&A and uh, we'll get around to it when we get to the, the time to ask a question. There's also an upvote function. It's a little thumbs up that you'll see next to a question. If you like that question um, and you'd like to hear it answered, please use that. Just tap that or, or click on it or whatever and upvote it. And obviously the questions are more popular will rise to the top, kind of like a league table. And uh, they're more likely to get asked if you upvote the question you like. Um, Lastly, to explain to people who don't know who we are, we are a new nicotine alliance. We're a consumers organ consumer organisation that advocates for the availability, availability of safer nicotine products for people who choose uh, to quit smoking. Uh, we are solely funded by private donations. So please visit our web website where you can see options to donate. But if you're in the UK, you can do so with your phone. Just text NNA and the donation amount to 70085. And, uh, and we'd be thankful for any donations you, you, you give us. This, this webinar itself costs us money, so obviously we need to fund it somehow and um, anything you can chip in the pot, we're most grateful for. So without further ado, we're gonna talk about this subject. So I am being invaded by Kat already. Uh, regular viewers will know this is a regular occurrence. Um, E-cigarettes have been around for over a decade now, and I think there's something like 3.6 million people using vaping products of some form or another, and over 50% of those have quit smoking entirely using um, vape products, for example. Uh, but there are many, many million more, millions more people who still smoke, uh, and most of them have tried some safer alternative at some point. There's a lot of uh, interest around vaping in particular, not so much about snus and uh, heated tobacco products and other alternatives, but in this country, as kind of a world leader on vaping, uh, there's been a lot of interest in these cigarettes, but why does some of them just decide they prefer to smoke? Um, we'll be discussing all these questions, uh, and I'd like to introduce first our first uh, smoker, uh, a good friend of mine, Liz Barber. Uh, she's a retired credit controller. She's currently juggling the competitive demands of a teenage daughter and an ailing uh, father in his 80s, um, and she's deprived, deprived of her usual vibrant social life because of the lockdown, which she's rather not happy about. She's been a smoker for 42 years and has only really seriously attempted to quit once and it lasted about three hours. Um, she does use vaping devices, but only on occasions where it's impossible to smoke. So welcome, Liz. Nice to see you. Hello. Um, now, I'll, I'll start. I'll ask you a quick question. You've told me um, that you are proud that you have bought no cigarettes in this country for over 20 years. Have you, have you kept that? I know you're just straight, you're back recently from Palmer, haven't you? Uh, buying right. your Dunhill International. That's right. I noticed I only had about three months supply left in the loft. So uh, I thought, right, I better get away while I can. So I hot footed it off to me, Mallorca and came back with a couple of suitcases. Well, as you do, 
the princely sum of about £53 a box of 200 I believe Dunhill International are around £12 a pack here. So it paid for itself a couple of times over and some. And, and a nice trip, I, ex I expect, and some good sunshine. So do you want to tell us about your smoking experience? You know, when did you start? Um, you know, how did you start? How long you've been smoking? Obviously, 42 years. And also about uh, what other products you've tried. You know, you, you understand you have a vaping product, but you still prefer to smoke. Do you want to just run us through it for a bit and just give us your experience? Yeah, sure. Well, I started smoking when I was 18. I uh, probably came quite late to it for, uh, for the area where I live. But yeah, I started to smoke when I was 18. And I've smoked ever since. I mean, I started with you know uh craven a and john player special and rothman's and from what i can remember going back all of that way cigarettes seem to be at a reasonable price and of course everybody smoked so i was by no means an oddity um you know over the years uh i never really thought about quitting i never had any particular desire to quit um, as I say, I think tried it once potentially for three hours and that was about it. I'd had enough by then and just decided it wasn't worth how grumpy I felt and deprived. So I just thought, no, I'm, I'm definitely a smoker, so I'm going to keep doing it because I like it. Um, 2007 came along and the smoking ban. And at that point in time, the only other product I'd used instead of cigarettes was the nicotine patches and the nicorette uh, was kind of a pencil type thing that you put a cartridge into. And when the woman at Boots who was selling me them said quite hopefully, oh, so you're going to stop smoking? I said, no, I'm on a transatlantic flight, which, you know, I got a look from her, but that's really the only time that I had had anything other than cigarettes. Um, then came the e-cigarette, so that in conjunction with the smoking ban, I suppose, thought, well, I'll give them a go because the smoking bans could be just here. And I called at the wet, and that's what country is like most of the time, particularly in the northeast. So I thought, well, I'll give them a go. And so the first one I bought, and it's probably about as old as that, is one of these things, which even holding it now is all sticky from where it's in in terms of turning out to small thoughtful i found it wasn't bad but that being said it's a, they're messy they fall over they leak i didn't particularly manage to find a juice that i like the taste of given that by this point in time i'd also up my cigarettes from, as I say, Craven Air, Regal, whatever, to Dunhill International. So it was quite a big ask to find something that would compare favourably to that. And I just found them a mess on. Um, but I did sort of persevere with them only for those times when I can't have a cigarette anywhere else, which was becoming more and more like everywhere um you know on trains and hotels and, and and all the rest of it even some outside spaces more recently um i got one of these which is a logic now they come complete with a capsule and actually their 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 tobacco one isn't bad at all as compared with dunhill um, it looks like a marker pen, so it can be used indoors and people just think you're sucking on a pen and it doesn't send up reams of smoke. And it didn't make me cough in the way that the other one did. But this was a full one when I set off to Spain. And I don't know if you can see, but without me using it more than twice, it too managed to tip over in the bag. And despite everything that we say about it, it did in fact empty out. So, you know, they don't really do what they say in so far as being leak proof. Um, this one, or is their brand of juice, is okay in terms of an alternative to Dunhill. But frankly, nothing compares to a Dunhill for me. Uh, they're not messy. Um, I can buy them for £5 a pack, 
and you know I, there's just no incentive for me it's never really been about about you know being safe anyway and given that i've now smoked for 42 years it's a bit late in the day to start thinking but you know i can stick another 10 years on the end of my life and quite frankly seeing what dad's going through at 88 i don't particularly wish to so that's my story <laughs> yeah I've, I've heard this a lot from smokers about the faff involved in in e-cigarettes you know and, and the leaks is a bit of a drawback so you don't think that these modern ones the pod mods as, as the the um the logic is you don't think they give you added benefits um, i haven't seen too much of leaking but maybe i use them a bit more than you or something i don't know um well, they don't get around the main drawback for me, which is the fact that unless you can keep them upright, they leak. That to me is the main draw, you know, that to me is, is, is something that they've all had in common one way or the other. It's not so much about battery life or cost or anything else. It's the fact that, 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 that they leak and it's, it's just a nuisance to me you know if I'm going to buy something that says it's going not going to leak I expect it not to leak so the pods are about I think they work out about three pound each that's three pounds that's just leaked all over my handbag just to add insult to injury um so no um until such times as and even then to be to be blunt as I say I enjoy smoking and whilst their particular juice is is good i mean i can't fault it in terms of it being uh you know too far removed from dunhill whatever it is that's in that as compared to what's in the cigarette there's some magic ingredient missing that does not make it as satisfying an experience however if you know by any any disaster i somehow ran out of cigarettes couldn't get to any they stopped selling them then yes, I'd find a way to live with that, but it would be to me, you know, quite a poor alternative by some, some order of magnitude. Yeah, there's a number of points that come to mind on that is, is firstly, it's one thing we get separated as smokers and vapors, but at the end of the day, we're all nicotine consumers. It's the nicotine we want, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, it's kind of getting into the uh, realm of innovation and a lot of arguments in favor of harm reduction products are that, as they innovate and get better, then they will be more attractive to people like you, Liz, who, who might find them an alternative that they can accept. Um, but we, we have a lot of regulations that are harming the innovation. Um, and one wonders if, if they're being held back and they're not getting to their full potential because, you know, obviously I think if you found something that's exactly the same as a Dunhill, but without having to light it up, you probably want to use it. Is that fair to say? Um... Oh, one, oh, sorry, oh, yeah, the last I thing. What, I, I can see what you're saying as far as the innovation, you know, if, 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 if there's no sort of um, encouragement to keep on improving these products. I mean, I would have thought it's not beyond the wit of man to come up with something that will only draw the juice if there's actually, you know, a draw being made on it. But I'm, I'm not technically minded. I don't know. Um, as to whether or not I would... Uh, come off the cigarettes. So I'd say, to be honest, probably not. If I can still get my cheap cigarettes, I'll still, I, I would imagine I'll still smoke. I've got no real incentive, as I say. I mean, why would I be doing this? I'm 61 soon. I've smoked for 40 odd years. There isn't much left to save, really, possibly apart from my teeth. Um, so to me, it, it's, you know, I could imagine if I was 30 or something thinking well actually yes this is a lot better but at this stage in the game to me well why would I I know that I enjoy cigarettes and whatever it is that they put into the juice or however the mechanism works or whatever it is that's in cigarettes there's something in cigarettes that just make it better I mean I, I wouldn't say that of all cigarettes I mean I've smoked you know tried a couple of cigarettes different brands now and I suppose as they're getting more and more expensive, there's, you know, brands coming out that I think consist of tobacco and whatever they've swept up off the floor and you think, Jesus. And, and in that case, yes, actually, then the vape is, is probably better than some of those cigarettes. But I'm not smoking nasty cigarettes. I'm smoking Dunhill International. And there's nothing nasty about them as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but it's funny, on the, on the other side, on the innovation thing, I, I've 
obviously going to speaking at events and stuff like that and often get asked about flavors and and uh, and people say should we get the flavors because they attract kids but one thing i was trying to explain to them is that if you just restrict it to tobacco flavors the tobacco flavors in e-cigarettes do not taste like tobacco they are they're just a horrible chemical thing you know i i, I started vaping thinking i want to use tobacco flavors but they were rubbish and and so the tobacco flavor i mean who who eats for example tobacco cake um, no one's perfected the flavors over time so i'm quite surprised you actually say that's quite a, a good flavor in the logic that you can get on with because it's it's kind of close to a, a dunhill um that's surprising so maybe there's innovation in the flavors that's happening but maybe not as much as you'd like in the devices themselves mm, yeah i would say so yeah and the, you know, and the leak ever, you know the idea of actually sort of smoking black currant juice or whatever it's just never appealed to me. I thought, if I want black currant juice, I'll just have a bloody drink of it. You know, I'm not. Gonna... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It, it, it just, yeah. I just could never get my head around that one. Um, and I suppose one of the other, one of the other things I guess um, is that when sm when the smoke smoking ban was brought in, it was all about you know protecting other people from secondhand smoke. So one would have thought. That when they brought in the cigarettes which you know there's nothing more than steam so far as i've been able to ascertain and you know lo and behold it was decided that even that was dangerous and you're not allowed to to to, to use them inside that's not legislatively it's just that most places won't let you there are a few pubs and what have you around where i live but i just thought well you know if i've got to go and stand outside anyway i'm damned if i'm going to do it for a, for an e-cigarette i'm going to yeah, do it well, for real cigarette. yeah exactly that's a that's a very good point and i'm sure we'll touch on that with hazel and louise later on those um on bands on vaping because there's a lot of prejudice around isn't there it's almost like some people they don't mind they don't care if it's smoking or vaping they just don't like seeing something being exhaled um, mm -hmm. and that seems to be their objection and, and and just one final thing i guess is that um and obviously you know you and i go way back when uh with regards you know when you was when you were smoking um so we know we know what happened with cigarettes we know that it was just a relentless uh campaign you know first they only wanted a few places where non-smokers could go and here we are now they wanting to actually you know ban you from having employment and living in a council house um so when the cigarettes came out uh we all said as smokers at the time we said don't be you know don't be too uh clever about this because we've seen the way that this has went with cigarettes and believe us when we say it, they will come for you and lo and behold they did and you know for quite some time it was quite difficult to ascertain whether ash was either you know for them or against them i mean at one point in time i remember reading that they condemned it because it looked as though you were smoking i thought well so does sucking a pen do they want to ban pens but it was it wasn't good enough that people were not smoking uh, it looked as though they were, and 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 I just saw this going the same way with e-cigarettes as it already had done with cigarettes. So I just thought, you know, there was no incentives there either. Yeah, yeah relentless is a good word because um, at the moment it's the, it's fierce, fiercely relentless with the EU and the WHO. Um, mm -hmm. So in some ways that's a good thing because it looks like they see it as a threat and they look like they that they might feel they're losing otherwise they wouldn't be as ferocious as they're being but yeah relentless is a good word um uh, i was going to ask you one other question um um the, the scare stories around vaping do you i know you probably would just brush them off you know you're you're sort of a um a robust woman you know you'll just think whatever and you understand how the press just um makes a lot of rubbish out mm -hmm. but do you think that would deter smokers from from trying these products in the first place well i was speaking to somebody last night who does smoke and this is exactly it made no sense to me because his argument was that uh well you don't know you know they don't really know about these e-cigarettes e at the minute and i said well no, and I suppose they, they won't know, you know, they won't have 20 years to look back on until they've had 20 years of being. But I said, you know, you've got one of three chances. Either, you know, they're 
considerably less harmful than cigarettes, which is what's being said at present, or um, they're about on a par with cigarettes, as in which case you could say, well, at least they're cheap and you can get away with smoking them inside sometimes, or they are much worse than cigarettes, which I said, I think is highly unlikely. But I said, so those three options there with an e-cigarette against a known, a known, you know, um, quality with, with regards to cigarettes. So I said, you know, comparing cigarettes to the three possibilities with e-cigarettes, you've got two chances of being no worse off um, and only one chance of being worse off. But, you know, all he was saying is, ah, yes, but, ah, yes, but, you know, they, they could do this and they could do that to, to your lungs. I mean, I said, well, you know, are they that much different from shisha? Because people are talking about inhaling this steam and such like. And so I don't know the answer to that question. What I did find with them, and it could just be me, um, is that when I, when I was using them, because I had the misfortune of having to stay in a non-smoking premises for the like, end of five days. So I was using them quite a lot. And I just found that my stomach was quite bubbly. You know, I've got, I, I, I suffer from IBS anyway. And then I was reading that there's different, two different kinds of thing that they use in the one vegetable based and one not. And that there had been reports that, that this could upset your stomach. But as soon as I wasn't in that hotel, I could go back to my cigarettes. So. Yeah but, yeah, but I would yeah. think that there are some people who are put off, but if they're smoking, I don't quite see the logic as to why they would be put off on that basis. Yeah, because okay. to me, until you know something, it, mm. you know, until you know yeah. something, you don't. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay, thanks, Liz. We'll, we'll, we'll move on and bring in Hazel now. Um, Hazel um, is a self-employed global business consultant who travels or used to travel extensively in her work before uh, all this lockdown stuff and has learned to understand and adapt the rules on smoking in many different countries. She describes herself often as a proud smoker and who's, who's tried vaping and uh, heat not burn products but decided they were not for her. So Hazel, let me see, let me put it on a screen so I can see you. Hazel, hello, um, hmm. welcome. Um, you, you said in, in an email before this while we were setting it all up that that you live, you live on your own, you make your own rules, you smoke wherever you like. Um, can I ask you before I ask you to say the same as, as Liz about your experience of smoking? Um, based on that, if there were more pubs that allowed vaping or ICOS or whatever, heated heat tobacco, would that be an incentive for you uh, in itself that you could, you could use it in a pub and stay indoors, for example, in the winter? Because unfortunately, there are a lot of pubs that are banning these things. Would that, would that be an incentive for you as a smoker if, if, if the all pubs allowed vaping indoors? It wouldn't make me stop smoking completely because I do enjoy smoking, same as Liz. Um, but it probably would make me try harder with the vaping products or ICOS. Right, yeah. Okay. okay. So, do you want to tell us about your experience of smoking when you started? You know. Um, how you've got to the position you're in now and, and uh, why, you, why you're a proud smoker, as I said. <laughs> sure. Yeah, um, I started smoking when I was 22, so even older than when Liz was when she started. Um, I basically smoked from then on. I gave up, actually, for six months at one point in time. Uh, however, you know, it made me even more grumpier than I am now, so, you know, I ended up taking it back up again. Um, I was actually uh, an early adopter of the um, vaping, you know, that, that sort of idea. Uh, I think what it was is when they first brought out, you know, the, the vaping stuff and I thought, oh, I'm, I'm a bit of a geek, you know. I thought, oh, this looks really cool. And um, I thought, well, this is a way of smoking inside. So I went and got myself sort of, you know, an e-cig. And I think the first time that I went to a pub, I actually went up and spoke to, you know, the bar staff about it because I didn't want to just sort of like use it. You know, I thought, well, that probably get myself and everybody else kicked out if everybody thinks I'm smoking there. So I asked them about it. I even sort of like showed them it, took it apart and all the rest. And I was told, no, you can't smoke it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no, oh, okay then. So uh, I kind of figured, well, what's the point there? And 
I mean, I did have that e-cig for, you know, quite some time and I did use it here and there, but I found that it just made my sort of like throat really dry and my mouth really dry. Um, and that's why I didn't get away with it to that extent. Now, I figured, okay, you know, maybe I could carry on with this because I do travel a lot, or I did. And um, I thought, well, that, that'd be a good way, you know, if I'm in hotel rooms and things like that, because in hotel rooms, they can't tell whether you're vaping or not, you know. So I thought, well, that's a good idea. However, then um, a lot of airlines have actually banned it, vaping. They won't allow you to vape on planes. Um, and also, uh, over the last few years, for example, I've been going to Australia quite a lot. Um, you can't vape in Australia. In fact, you can't take vaping equipment into Australia. You know, you could get fined for it. You could get jail time for it. Um, so if I go to Australia, I can go there, I can buy cigarettes, but if I was vaping, I couldn't go to Australia and take in vaping equipment like an e-cig on, and I couldn't actually buy it while I was there anyway. Yeah. So yeah. That, that was really, you know, what put me off. I think if there were more places, you know, that you could actually vape, I, I don't think I would give up smoking completely, but the chances are that I would think more about it. But my idea here is one, I enjoy smoking, and two is what's the point? As Liz actually said, you know, I don't want to be standing outside having an e-cig. Why should I do that? I could stand outside and have a cigarette that I enjoy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's incentives and stuff, isn't it? That's right. Um, I'm going to ask you, um, because I, I think it was about three years ago where I, I, said, I spoke to you and said, uh, have you tried a heated heat not burn product? And you said, what's mm -hmm. that? So I'm going to ask you about... Um, publicity yep. of these products is it, it is a factor in many smokers not switching that they don't even hear about the products they're not allowed to be advertised in many places they might have heard of vaping products because mm. they're on the side of buses and on billboards but things like the eye cost which you've tried uh, and you said you, you quite liked it i think you said you didn't like the cost but um but uh, you know those sort of products people don't actually see them smokers will not see them they, they won't even know that they exist and snus we've got a question on snus which we'll come to at the q a uh asking uh, i'll ask i'll ask it now have you heard of snooze do you know what snooze is uh, only because of you oh right <laughs> well there you go yeah this the is, same with is icons. The... i only know about that because of you yeah so so is that a problem do you think that smokers just don't know about them any of these products? I, I think so yes i mean i i'd never heard of you know like i course um and you know i did try it again i had this problem you know it it was okay but again you know, uh, it made my mouth really dry, you know, and again, I figured, well, I've still got to go outside. So, you know, it makes no difference either way. You still got to go outside. So I think going back to your original question about, you know, if, if more pubs or whatever would actually say, yes, you can use these things indoors. Um, I think that that would probably go a long way to helping people say, well, OK, I'm not going to give up completely, but you know, I will use that more often because then I don't have to go outside. But as long as we're actually, you know, told smokers, vapors, ICOS users, everyone has to go outside, then, you know, it really is, what's the point? Yeah. Um, I'll ask, while I've got you both in the room, before we bring Louise in, I'll ask you a, a quick question. There was a study done in 2017 by Neil McKegney of the, um, uh, the Centre for Substance Use Research in Glasgow. Uh, and he, he studied, um, I think it was 650, he surveyed 650 supporters of Forest. Now, obviously, they're going to be quite invested in the subject, but I don't think his, his uh, conclusions were altogether unrepresentative smokers. He found that 95% of them said they smoke for the pleasure um, aspect, and 70% were not thinking about quitting anytime soon. Would you say that's about right from smokers that you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And you, Liz? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think we're down to the diehards now. <laughs> yeah, the diehards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. On that note, we'll bring Louise in because I'm sure she's probably learned a lot from that. Um, Louise, of course, many many people watching will know know Louise. She worked in learning disability for thirty years. 
um, from 2004 to 2018, was responsible for Leicester Stop Smoking Services becoming the first e-cig friendly service in the country. And there are now many more following her example. Good evening, Louise. Hello there. Right. <laughs> That's, so, that was absolutely fascinating. I just wanted to say that. Um, I've, I've made so many notes. It's really good. <laughs> Okay, Sorry, so carry on, Martin. obviously, first thing I would say, you're not getting these two, are you, Louise? You're not going to get them. <laughs> no, and 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 there's and there's a lot of people who who we don't get. Um, I mean, and I think one of the most fascinating things about this sort of conversation is that in the stop smoking service, we see people who who have decided that they want to quit, or they they know that they've got to, perhaps because of a really serious health reason. Um, and 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 of course they're they're ready for a conversation, and you know we we wouldn't try and twist the arm of anybody who who really wasn't ready because you know it has to be that person's decision. I mean I I was a smoker and I can relate to what you were saying, Liz, about Dunhill. That was my that was my uh, brand of choice, and I was I would be very very grumpy if if somebody uh, you know like my family or my partner said you know when are you going to stop? Um, I, I felt very, very bound up with, with, with smoking as part of my identity. So I can absolutely relate to what, what you're saying. Um, but I think now, if, if I was still smoking and vaping had come along, I would absolutely go with that and, and, and push through the kind of, you know, what, how you describe that kind of, uh, you know, irritation barrier Liz was was really interesting to me and I've heard this a number of times you know that the, the flavor isn't quite right the you know that the stickiness and the leaking and a lot of the people that we talked to have discarded the idea of vaping because they tried one of the early ones and and you know they were you know weak batteries not enough nicotine vile flavor and so having tried it once they haven't realized perhaps that you know, there's been so much innovation and the products are uh, much better than, than they were, you know, back in 2014, 15 and, you know, perhaps earlier. And I'm sorry, your, your logic leaked. That's, that's a real shame because you could have, <laughs> you could have been convinced at that point, couldn't you? Well, it, it's, um, you know, it, it's not the first time it's happened either. So it's definitely a, you know, a flaw in the design. But obviously, there's got to be a hole in the plastic that you suck it through. Otherwise, it wouldn't come through at all. Interestingly, though, just one of the things that you said there, when you said, um, you know, you wouldn't want to twist people's arms, etc. I think part of it for me, and, you know, I don't know how other people are who have been long term smokers. But um, Part of it for me is actually, I'm well past the point where I feel as though I've had my arm twisted. I feel as though I've been rung round with all of the anti-smoking um, rhetoric and everything else, all of the measures. It's all I have heard for years. And, you know, I'm not one of these, <clears throat> excuse me, people that takes kindly to that. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, the day for there to be, a, the, 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 there could have been a collaborative approach about it. Uh, is long gone. Ash went all out and wanted to denormalise me and much else beside. So in terms of anybody offering any anti-smoking services to me, forget it, I wouldn't go near any of you with a bar barge pole because mm -hmm. of Ash. Yeah, funnily enough, um, can I just throw something in here? Because mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago, I fractured my ankle. And um, yes, as you can imagine, that was a horrible time for me. I do live on my own and I had a surgical boot and I had crutches. So a day or so after I'd fractured it, I had to go to the fractures clinic at the hospital, which I've now found out where the hospital is. I haven't been near a doctor or hospital in years. And um, I went there and do, do you know, they, they were great. Don't get me wrong. This is nothing to do with the, you know, the people, the NHS and all the rest of it. But at one point in time, they put me into this room with this person and I was asked about, you know, like um, eating habits and drinking habits and smoking, obviously, you know. Now, given at that point in time, um, I was pretty upset with all of this. Um, I basically didn't even know how I was going to feed myself, you know, because with two crutches and a surgical boot, you know, how do you cook? How do you eat? I couldn't carry things from one place to the next. That, you know getting a shower, getting upstairs to bed, you know, things like that. That was all that was on my mind. And um, of course, I was given a lecture on smoking and I was told sort of like, 
oh, well, you really need to give up smoking. And I was like, are you kidding me? At this point in time, this is all that you've got to say to me? And I was really, really angry. You know, I thought, I've got a lot more pet dressing problems at this precise moment. Now, if I, they'd said to me, right, if you give up smoking today, then tomorrow your ankle will be absolutely perfect. Then I might have thought about it. But it wasn't because I knew that I was in for the long term. It took, you know, quite a while before that ankle actually um, was better. So, yeah, I agree with you, Liz. I mean, and that wasn't the first time. You know, there's been other times where, you know, you go to the dentist or whatever. The first thing they ask you is about sort of like stop smoking. Every time I hear the words um, smoking cessation, I run a mile. Don't mm. want to know. Mm. Mm. Sorry. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if if I can answer some of that, and and I'm I'm not. I mean, th this this isn't a webinar about should you stop or or shouldn't you stop. I'm I'm we're, you know we're not here to talk about that. You know, we're, we're talking about safer alternatives. But you know, just as a, a a little aside there, we we see a lot of people who have have decided because of a health issue that they they really want to make now a decision you know and, and you know sometimes people make a decision when they're in their 30s 40s 50s you know we we, we even have you know people in their 70s and 80s who who have decided that they they do want to stop them and it's it's very often a, a health issue that's prompted that it's like um a, a kind of light bulb moment i suppose um and i'm i'm thinking of somebody that i spoke to fairly recently who got diabetes and you know he hadn't realized that the smoking was actually killing off the circulation in his toes and he was facing amputation of his toes because of this and he decided to stop then even though it was going to be difficult for him because he didn't want to be amputated any further off his leg basically but as i say that's that's a, a whole other issue what i'm really interested in though is the um the thing about how restrictions on indoor vaping are a, a really big barrier for you. Now, we, I, I know this, you know, because we, you know, we, we talk about this sort of stuff in, in tobacco harm reduction, but it's so interesting to hear you both say it's not worth it to, to swap, swap to a safer product if you still can't use it indoors. You see what, where I'm coming from here? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It would, you know, would have to be an incentive for me. Yeah. And yeah. most yeah. of those incentives have been removed. So, you know, why mm. would I? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll throw, can I throw in something on that? Um, yeah. I've heard many vapors who, um, who find, although they can stay in, they have smoking friends who go out to smoke and they go out with them because they say they miss the atmosphere and the banter and the chat yeah. from yeah. smoking outdoors. They say that that the smokers are the ones who, who seem to be the more interesting people. So I wonder how many people do that. I, I've heard many vapors say that. Uh, personally, not for me, I quite like sitting indoors in the cup when it's cold. And if, you know, I, I search all the time for pubs I can vape in, but, um, but yeah. <laughs> and and I really do wish more pubs allowed it. You know, we, we do try and, and persuade um, landlords to uh, you know to allow considerate vaping and I mean part of my work I'll show you just this picture you know part of my work is with the National Centre for Smoking Cessation and Training and uh, I don't are you able to see that you know we've we've produced um, yeah. vinyl yeah. stickers yeah. window stickers and so on to try and encourage landlords of, of pubs or landladies uh, to allow considerate vaping um, it's a lot of the public that are really really anti as as i'm sure you know martin you're very aware aren't you that uh you know if you if you vape inside it's often the punters that uh you know will be will be anti i just want to say uh, just while i've got um a few minutes though before we go on to questions about the enormous support for alternative products that there is in the uk and i think perhaps as um perhaps the, the general public aren't quite so aware of, of how much um, you know Public Health England's Cancer Research UK, NCSCT and ASH have gone out on a limb about this and and had a lot of criticism from from the rest of the world about um, you know their their very pro vaping stance. Um, um, you know, I'll I'll ask, can I ask you a question Louise on, on that yeah. kind of subject is what we heard from Liz and and, uh, and Hazel is that um, 
their, their messaging. They didn't appreciate the messaging of, of when people were telling to stop smoking. Now, I know you're trying to send the message to smoking cessation services and other, other health professionals to sort of be like, uh, like the word was used, collaborative. And so, you know, and you're always pushing this and saying, you know, why don't you encourage people to use e-cigarettes? Because I think a lot of smokers would prefer to be encouraged to do something mm. rather than almost ordered to do something. Do you think the messaging on on the, the on the side of people who want to tempt people away from smoking could be a bit better? I, th I think there are so many different people doing it and some people get it wrong. I mean, you know, if you if you take, say, doctors generally, you know, they're not all good at communicating with patients. You know, some, some you know, uh, can be, you know, high hand. You know, I'm not criticising doctors in particular. I'm just using them as an example. They can be very high handed about the way they communicate. They use the wrong language. You know, they don't understand how, how shocked somebody is when, you know, when they're, they're given a, a really serious diagnosis. You know, if they you know, have to be told they've got cancer. You know, sometimes that kind of empathy is lacking. Now, other healthcare professionals can be the same as well you can get really good ones who do work in a collaborative way and others who who can be a bit patronizing and we i mean another thing that that we've done as part of ncsct is pr provide an e-cig briefing that ash fully endorse um, you know to to encourage people to be open-minded about tobacco harm reduction and and safer alternatives and to do everything they can to to make people aware that that you know vaping is so much safer than smoking um, but not everybody has read that and and we we try and get it out there we can't um, we can't be everywhere I'm afraid and then as soon as you do then you've got a, a newspaper article like uh, like Liz said um, you know you've you've got something bad in the media that uh, you know, will will make people think that they could be worse than smoking. Yeah, I've had that with people who work for me. You know, um, well, not so much these days, but people who visit the office and they they say, "Oh, I read about them in the papers; they're worse than smoking." And it is very mm -hmm. frustrating uh, because yeah. a lot of that message people will read newspapers. You know, they're not like us; their entire world doesn't revolve around talking about nicotine. Or anything. They just they just yeah. read what's in the papers, and they just yeah. it just takes one headline that and like that, and they mm. they. They've made their uh, their choice, and and that's that they're sticking to it. You know, they're not going to yeah. read much more into it. They're they're too interested in other things. You know, everyone's got busy lives; they don't want to do that. So yeah, we constantly fight about that. But yeah, it's interesting you said about doctors, and you know, because doctors are doctors, aren't they? At the end of the day, they're not politicians, they're not counsellors, mm -hmm. they're, they're just people who've got their own. Mm -hmm. um, personalities so yeah I can understand yeah. some will be better and sometimes they have a hard day as well and you mm. know maybe you know the the milk of human kindness you know just runs <laughs> out sometimes but uh, again that's 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 a side issue but I suppose for the people that we see in the uh, in the stop smoking business some of them absolutely go for vaping and and think it's the best thing that they ever discovered and they say that they they had switched from from being a, a devoted smoker to uh, a passionate vapor within days you know they love the flavors they love the gadgetry and so on uh, others try it still smoke for a little while and then maybe transition some don't get on with it at all but still want to quit so they might use patches lozenges that sort of thing something else and you've got to have a lot of different solutions for different people for, for the ones that actually want to quit it's worth noting um, by the way although we're we're talking about harm reduction here. Liz and Hazel are more representative of nicotine users in the UK than, than any of us. I mean, they are in the majority, really. So um, there is obviously something that isn't quite working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, our, our safer message is being undermined all the time. And, yeah. and I get very angry about that, as you know. <laughs> uh, we, we, we've got a few questions here. Um, I think I've kind of asked this already. Bengt, who's, um, who's a massive fan of Snus, has asked if you've ever tried tobacco-free nicotine pouches. Now, they're different to Snus. Um, firstly, I'm not sure if, uh, like you said, Hazel, you hadn't heard of Snus, but you only heard of it because of me. Liz, have you heard of Snus? Have you heard of tobacco uh, or nicotine uh, pouches which have got no tobacco in them? Do you know anything about those at all? Oh, I've just come yeah, I've they've heard. just come on the market in this country sort of quite recently and they're sold in Tesco's and Sainsbury's and things like that. But do yeah. you know anything about them? 
Um, not a great deal, no, because I'm not interested in chomping on something. <laughs> <laughs> so that wouldn't interest you either. You, you'll yep. you'll probably like me. I mean, I do use uh, nicotine pouches, and I've tried snooze and everything. But I still want something to inhale, and that's why vaping works for me. So you, mm -hmm. are you both the same on that? You just want something to inhale. That that wouldn't really attract you, no. Well, no, no, not really. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, I I think that the e-cigarettes. I mean, obviously, I probably had the first generation, and I understand that they're, you know, improving all the time. I hadn't heard of this ICOS until you mentioned it last week probably for the very reason that they're not allowed to be advertised anywhere, which is somewhat counterproductive, one would think. But in terms of e-cigarettes, which I think most people have heard of, you know, you can't knock them really. When, when I consider the number of people that I know who have switched from smoking to vaping, you've got to think, well, anything, you know, that, that big farmers managed to come up with thus far, hasn't come anywhere close, I would suggest, to, to getting people off cigarettes as well as e-cigarettes have. My sister was also a hardened smoker. The only reason she got a, an e-cig was because, like me, she was running out of duty freeze. And in order to eke them out between then and the next holiday, she got an e-cig to kind of, you know, make, make the cigarettes yeah. that she had last a bit longer. Within four days, within four days, she was no longer wanting a cigarette. And in fact, when she tried one on the fifth day, it just about knocked her out. And my sister, if you can believe this, was actually a more hardened smoker than me. And more <laughs> hardened smokers than me are pretty hard to find. As I say <laughs> though, and I think Louise, this is something that I cannot emphasize enough and Martin will tell you, uh, you know, Martin's known me for a long time, but what really, really hardened me against any of this, first and foremost, was Ash and their entire methodology and the misinformation and the slurs and everything that went on for so long. Um, it's almost as though, you know, there's a mindset like, you know, there is just no way that I am ever going to stop smoking on the back of anybody thinking that Ash could have possibly had any persuasion uh, on me on that particular uh, decision. Um, I can't tell you how much I despise them as an organisation. And it didn't really uh, endear me to them any further when after hearing about it for what seemed quite some time to me as to whether they were for them or against them, they eventually landed on what I think is the right side of it. Why would you not want to uh, encourage the use of something that is demonstrably, as far as anybody knows, far, far safer for you than cigarettes. But there was one point in time that that didn't matter as long as, uh, as much as it mattered that nobody was using anything at all. And, and it was just that for me, it, 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 Ash more than anybody uh, has done more to, to, to get my back up and entrench me. So then, you know, if it left to my own devices, I might have quite possibly given it a, a bit more of a whirl. But they did, really did uh, finish me with any kind of conversation around me. Right. I'll, um, I'll, 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 I'll say to you, Liz, that um, uh, as you said earlier, it's now the vapors that get in all the misinformation and the bullying and everything else. So, so um, what you said is true. You, you predicted that quite well. Um, and we're fighting our own cause at the, at the same time, but we could all see it coming at some point. Didn't, didn't yeah. we? And some people have changed sides. Um, um, I mean, Louise, you, yourself, you said you were a bit sceptical in the beginning, weren't Absolutely, you? Absolutely, yeah. And I was, I was going to say that, um, you know, Ash's position now, um, and, and I respect what you're saying, Liz, and, and I understand, you know, that you're, you know, you're expressing feelings that you've gotten that, that have built up over some time, but their position now is, you know, I think, you know, they've they've defended the position of the UK in, in terms of, uh, you know, encouraging uh, innovation and, and, the, and the spread of tobacco harm reduction. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very glad they have because there have been times when the only organisation that was, was holding our corner were them against a lot of opposition. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. We, we better, get on to, better get on to some questions because we're running short on time here. Um, yeah. There might be some that are a bit difficult to answer, but let's start with Andrew Thompson. He's the top voted question. Do we know the percentage of people who try alternative nicotine products but still think nicotine is the major cause of harm from smoking rather than tobacco itself? I mean, there are a lot of people who associate nicotine with harm rather than the combustion, aren't there? What do, what do you think of that, Liz and, and, and Hazel? Have you come across people who, who say it's the nicotine is the problem? Yes, um, yes, because I, I know someone that when we, I was speaking to them about vaping, and they said, well, isn't the nicotine just as harmful? And I said, actually, it's not. It's to do with, you know, what's actually in the, the cigarettes and things like that. It's not actually the nicotine itself, which I don't believe that it is. I remember seeing a study a few years ago where they said something silly like 70% of doctors thought that nicotine was the dangerous mm. sub, uh, thing in mm. cigarettes, which is just daft. I mean, uh, mm. but I have been to a lot of events, obviously, and I'm, I'm, there was one I went to where, the, where a doctor who is, who is on the side of harm reduction said that what it really needs is more training for GPs. They don't get training in harm reduction products. They get training in lots and lots of things because they're GPs. They have to know <laughs> lots and lots of stuff. But as at the moment, they don't have the training of what e-cigarettes are and what, what safer nicotine products are. So why would they not think that nicotine is dangerous if they've, they've seen adverts, especially like I did back in, in the day where Nick Oteen was the evil man, yeah. you know, the evil character, wasn't he? Nick Oteen, it wasn't tobacco, it was Nick Oteen, this cartoon superhero or evil guy or whatever, I can't remember what it was. It's a long time ago. Um, okay, well, we've got one from Judy Gibson here who talks about uh, the impression of e-cigarettes. She said, um, uh, often, often they're, they're seen as uncool. Um, and part of our problem is that we want to try and send the message that these are for adults who want to quit smoking, <laughs> while all the time our opponents are saying, oh, young people are taking them up. Um, so apparently young people are saying, and I've heard this from my son as well, that, that for young people, smoking is the rebellious choice. Vaping is just something that old people use. Now, that's a good message that we want to put across, that, that young children or young people don't use e-cigarettes. But at the same time, young people are the ones who start taking up smoking in the first place. How, how do you, has anyone got any ideas about how you bridge this gap where when they're always talking about the children, the children, the children, but you can't say to young people, don't smoke, use one of these instead, because the moment you do, you're seen as targeting kids. Do you want to start on that one, Louise? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think I think Britain's got, uh, you know, very good regulation to protect um, young people in terms of age of sale, you know, that you can't sell products to under 18s. They will obviously get hold of them anyway. But, you know, we, we know that, um, you know, this so-called vaping epidemic that they talk about in, in other countries is absolutely not happening here. And it's not happening in other countries either. That the, the, the young people who might be vaping could have been smoking anyway, probably would have been smoking. Um, and and the, the reason we, we know that is that young people's smoking rates are falling faster than ever. Um, so, you know, we, we can see that there's, there's a, a cause and effect there, they're, that they're not smoking, they're vaping instead. And I would much rather that, that, um, you know, a young person isn't taking up a habit that will, uh, you know, cause early death and, and, you know, many years of illness, um, likely later later in life. I'd much rather they started vaping. Um, I've got you got some support in the comments uh, in the questions from Germany, Liz uh, Norbert, who lots of people will know here. Uh, he, she said he said it, it was only when pesky German anti-smokers ranted against vaping that got me curious in 2012. So there's, there's obviously a flip side to that. You know, some people were, were rejecting it by taking up vaping because they were told it was a bad thing. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, what else have we got here? We've got um, uh, Jackie Ori. Uh, she's, she's another one. She's from, uh, I think, Canada, I think she's from. Um, many countries treat vaping exactly the same as smoking. In some countries, vapors are treated worse than smoking banning it everywhere, forcing vapors outdoors, taxing vaping products to make up for lost tab revenues, etc. Did this look, lead to more and more people giving up vaping and returning to smoking? Yeah. Because it's not an incentive. Yeah, we'd agree with that. Have you had um, any of that? Have you seen any of that, Liz and, and Hazel? You know, you, you, 
Liz especially. We'll start with Liz because you've got a big circle of friends. I know you've told me and I've seen the pictures. So <laughs> um, have you seen that in any of your friends where they've just been turned off by all this stuff? Well, it's as I said to you the other, the other day when we were speaking, um, the reality is that among my friends, there is, you know, the, the greater percentage of them don't smoke, but there's a fairly hefty percentage who wouldn't describe themselves as smokers at all. And in terms of them buying, buying cigarettes, they aren't. They smoke mine <laughs> for the most part. Um, I don't... Uh, as I say, you know, I, I do know people who use the vapes, uh, my sister, probably one of them, and then a lot of people that I've known through Forest who've moved from smoking to vaping. Um, I was interested in what you're saying about young people, though, because amongst my daughter's friends, who are all in the 18 to 20-ish age group, of her friends who use, you know, who have the option to go one way or the other, They've all went straight to cigarettes, not on to, to vaping. I don't know why, but, you know, it, it, it's as though they didn't even consider vaping, not least because it was cheaper, I would have thought, but they, they smoke, and she's the only one that doesn't, my daughter. But um, That's what my son said. It's, that's what my son said. It surprised me. He, I said to him, you know, because it was all the news, I said, you know, do many of your friends in, in the college that you go to vape? And he said, no, most of them smoke which really, really did surprise me in this day and age that they were, they were smoking rather than vaping. He said that he knows very few people in his college that, that vaped. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why that, that should be the case. You know, it seems strange, but... Um, and well, Hazel, you, Hazel, you spoke about, we've got another question here, Jeffrey Zamora, uh, about um, types of vaping devices, heat not burn products, snooze and other nicotine pouches that could work for them being mostly invisible because of bans on advertising. Now you found that with the ICOS, you hadn't even heard of it, had you? I mean, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, would you think people that you know would maybe take on these products or, you know, if they knew more about them, if there was some, you know, they can't advertise, they can't put out any, you know, heat not burn, for example, they can't advertise vaping. You can only have billboards. You can't have something that tells you how to, use it you can't have something that says that it's a safer product you're not allowed to say that do you think that would be something that could encourage more smokers to to switch well, possibly um you know i did speak to another friend of mine who is a smoker and you know she doesn't want to you know go to vaping um and i think actually a couple of the things that she said about it one is that you know why do you want to wander around with what looks like a walkie talkie in your hands you know <laughs> Um, and the other thing was, you know, about the uh, the big clouds of smoke, you know, because there is an element of that, you know, where you get these big sort of like plumes of smoke. Um, so, you know, that that was because uh, I asked her about it, knowing I was coming on to this and I did ask her because I thought, well, let's get some, uh, you know, feedback. So, um, of course, she's heard of e-cigs, you know, vaping, uh, but, you know, I don't think she's heard of ICOS. I, I should have asked her about that one. I don't think she's heard of it. And yeah, to be honest, Martin, if you hadn't mentioned it to me, I wouldn't have known. Because yeah. there is, yeah. obviously there's no advertising around any of this sort of stuff. Yeah, well, it's, it's true. And there's an interesting point from Andrew Thompson here who says that reduced air pressure in a plane cabin may cause leaks. Now I know that when you said you travel with your uh, logic, Liz, it could have been that, but you know, there's not enough information about these things. So that's that's part of the problem, isn't it? That people don't know that um, you can go to a vape shop and and, and I'll, I'll finish on this question here from Simon Way. You can go to a vape shop and find all this information out and you can get people to teach you how the things work, how to stop the leaks, you know, stuff like that. Things I've learned over time. But as he says here, the key to stopping with any of these products, which is what Louise said earlier, is really wanting to stop smoking. He said, when I switched to vaping four years ago, I'd had enough of smoking. I've been smoking 30 years. And I think with many smokers, until they get to that point, then really that's not, nothing's going to change what they, they're happy very with. Very true. Yes, yeah. very true. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I was just yeah. about to say to, to, to Louise specifically with regard to e-cigarettes or ICOS or anything else, um, and you'll know this again, Martin, it was one of the arguments that we made all the way along the line, is if you make something illicit, what do young people do? They do what's illicit because that's what young people always yeah. have done. Yeah. 
Um, but I think, you know, there's good reason to take heart, I suppose, that as, you know, many people do, and probably a lot sooner than I did, a lot more people do decide within possibly a few years or whatever, you know, maybe 10, 15 or less than that, that really they ought to be thinking about not smoking. Well, at least right now, right here and now, there's something that you can say to them, well, look, you know, there is these actually, mm -hmm. and, you know, give them a go. I was saying that just the other night to somebody I know on Twitter who was clawing the walls because he's trying to stop smoking. And I said, well, have you tried these cigarettes? And I sent him a link and I said, try these, they're not bad. So I'm quite happy to recommend them and I'm glad that they exist. And I think they're very good, um, you know, very, very good, but, not not at this point in time not i'm still not somebody that wants to stop smoking and i probably never will be yeah right listen i'm really so this has flown by and it's been really entertaining thank you very much and very educational as well but i'm going to ask you for a very very quick like 10 second answer to this liz and hazel uh, if there's one thing that would make you switch to a safer product what would it be one aspect that you would think you know what if they could get that right then i might have a go one aspect liz first um, not leaking and being more like Dunhill's. <laughs> and Hazel? Actually being able to smoke them indoors. Right, that's good. That's a great way to end it. Thank you very much. Thanks to Liz, Hazel and Louise for, for, for a great subject. It's, it's gone really well. Thank you very much. And, that I'll, and thanks for just... great chairing, Martin. <laughs> thanks right we have to finish just very briefly with the the last thing thank you to all obviously if you enjoy this we plan plenty more uh we've come up with two or three ideas already for future ones um please sign up as a supporter at nnalliance.org to be added to the main list find and subscribe to our youtube channel where we'll be publishing all these um most of all we rely on private donations so please see the donate page on the website which lists many options to help or as i said if you're in the uk text nna plus the donation amount to 70085. So um, we don't want to run out of time on the YouTube channel, so we, we missed the ending, so I better say goodbye. hope you have a pleasant whatever time of the day it is, wherever you are in the world, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.